Hey guys, it's me once again. I'm Coral, welcome back to my channel or welcome for the first time, I don't know. Whatever it is, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today I've made up a little list of, well, let's see, I have three books that I personally would like to get to this summer. Uh, books that feel summery to me. Obviously I've never read them, so I'm not sure whether they will be or not, but we'll see, I guess, once I read them. And then I have a couple books that I have read that I would like to recommend to you if you'd like some books that feel summery for this season. The first book I would like to read this season is The Ritual by Adam Neville. This is about some college friends who go on a hike. And I know that this takes place up near the Arctic Circle, so I'm not really sure like what season that is, what the weather would be like. Um, this actually looks more like fall on the cover, but just the premise of hiking and maybe getting lost in the woods feels so summery to me. So I'd like to get to this one. I feel like this might have a little bit of survival horror to it. I know there's also like a supernatural touch, but I'm super into to survival horror. And I haven't read a good survival horror book in a while. So I'm really excited about this one. Okay, I also picked up uh, Creature by Hunter Shea. Maybe you'll be proud of me for reading a book that I've recently bought. Um, <laughs> I know this one does take place in summer because um, there's this couple, they go to Maine for the summer to like stay in like a cabin and there's something in the woods outside their cabin. And I'm so super psyched about this one too. I'm so excited. Another like maybe it will get to be survival horror. Definitely creature horror, that's for sure. I am psyched. And the last one you will have seen if you watched my TBR video for June because I plan on reading it this month and that is Tribesmen by Adam Caesar. Um, this is about a movie, kind of like Cannibal Holocaust where a group of people have gone to film on an island, they definitely took advantage of the native residents. Not super clear in the synopsis. I read it when I, um, this came in my Nightworms package for May, so I did read it then, but I don't wanna reread the synopsis because I don't want to know what it's about. This cover is so good though. Um, I love it. I want this poster on my wall. Okay, so that is the first part of this video. Now I will um, show you a couple books that I have read and then I would like to recommend as books I think you, I think would be best read in the summer. The first one here is one of my favorite books. Actually, like I really love all these books. <laughs> um, this is one of my favorites from last year. I only just read it last year, which is a shame. But this is The Ruins by Scott Smith. This takes place in August. It's like the first line of the book. Let me read it to you. Oh, never mind. It's not the first line. Oh my god, I lied. Ah. It was August, a foolish time to travel to the Yucatan because they're going to the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. If you are lucky enough to not have experienced this book or the movie that they adapted from it, The Ruins is about a group of young, like college age students. Actually, they're probably just about my age in their mid twenties. Um, and they are vacationing in Mexico and they meet another couple tourists, one's from Germany, one's from Greece, and they kind of make up this ragtag group. And um, the man from Germany, he says his brother went, his brother met this woman who is part of like an expedition team, something like that. They're, they're going to an archeological dig in like this rune that they found in the middle of the jungle. 
And so this group of people, they decide to help him find his brother because now he hasn't heard from him and he knows where the rune is, kind of, and he wants to find his brother and these people are kind enough to go with him. Also, like, they think that it might be cool to, you know, be a part of this, which is not something that would typically happen on a vacation. So, <sighs> This is so good. And if you've seen the movie and have not read the book and you're like, oh, the movie though. Like this is so freaking good. Oh, there's some really good body horror in this. Um, this is a survival horror book. So it has that great thing, like I always say about survival horror, where the relationships of the people in the group start to break down. They don't trust each other. They're hungry, they're starving. They're thirsty, they're just uh, upset and uh, in such a great way. I don't even know. Mm. I hope I hope that this prompts you to pick up this book if you haven't because it is such a great book. I cannot say that enough. I would also recommend to you The Girl Who Loves Tom Gordon by Stephen King. This is another like <laughs> lost in the woods kind of book. I love those, I guess. Looking at this list that I've compiled. This is about, I guess she's nine. I always thought she was a little bit older than that. It's been a long time since I've reread this though. It's about time. Um, this nine-year-old girl, her name is Trisha. And while on a hike through the woods, she leaves the path and she has to go to the bathroom and she gets turned around and just is suddenly lost in these woods. And her only like, man, she's trying to find her way out obviously, her only like link to the world anymore is this Walkman cassette player that she has. And so she's trying to conserve the batteries in it. Um, she's listening to Red Sox, I think. Is he, is Tom Gordon from the Red Sox? Man, it is, I think it's the Red Sox. Um, her favorite baseball player, Tom Gordon from the Red Sox, she is able to listen to the games on her cassette player and it's like her link to the world and is what's keeping her going. And this is sad a little bit and intense and just such a great book because I mean the main character is only nine years old but Stephen King just writes such great characters and you grow to love Trisha and care about her and you're so worried for her and it's just a great book. It's also short so like maybe you have a car ride or a train ride somewhere and you can just read that in a couple hours. We would not have a list about summer books without The Troop by Nick Cutter. This is also just such a great book. <laughs> it's kind of survival horror. Anyways, it's about this Boy Scout troop and they are spending some time on an island. Where are they? Oh, it's in Canada. So it's like an uninhabited, like small, but uninhabited island near where they live. And it's for their Boy Scout troop. So it's the troop master and then a group of like four or five, six boys. And they are on this island and they are exposed to this parasite. And this book is so gruesome. It made me like, oh, like clench my butt cheeks. It was like, oh, so gross, <laughs> but it's so good. And it's another one of those books where when you start reading it, it's so hard to like stop and take your mind out of it and like be part of real life. So you just wanna sit and you just wanna read the whole thing. It's a great book. And I really, I might try to reread this this summer actually because it's been a couple years. This is my first Nick Carr book and I think he's one of my favorite authors. So there's that. This is one of my, uh, just this book, I had not heard of it anywhere until I renewed my subscription to Book of the Month for a couple months last summer. And this book came up and I had never seen it before. The cover was striking. That's actually like what made me 
click on the picture on the website to see what it was about because otherwise I might have just passed it up if it had not been for this cover. But I had never heard of it before. I had never heard of Michael Rutger, who, uh, this is a pseudonym, so I wouldn't have heard of, uh, you know, I wouldn't have ever heard of him. This is another survival horror book. Maybe I should have tried to find some books that weren't survival horror, but that is what I love and that's what Summer reminds me of for some reason. This is about a group of people, they are on this TV show together, not, not necessarily on it, but it's like the producers and the script writer and the star and all that. But it's like um, one of those like travel channel shows and this one's called The Anomaly Files. And in the show, they kind of look for, it's like, it's like if The X-Files was on the Travel Channel kind of, you know what I mean? So they're looking for this cave called Kincaid's Cave, which is a real thing, kind of. I mean, I don't think it's ever been found, but this is, a documented thing where some explorers in like the early 1900s, maybe late 1800s, maybe early 1800s. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's wrong with me? But there's this cave that they found in the Grand Canyon and they said it just had like all these ancient artifacts, like carvings on the walls, just like a gold mine for archaeologists, but it's never been found since, since these initial explorers found the cave. So the anomaly files in the book, they find Kincaid's cave and shit gets nuts. They get stuck in the cave. And so it's survival horror, but there's also like this kind of supernatural element in it and some skullduggery and like backstabbing and it's just such a great book it's so underrated um and luckily for us or me i guess anyone who loved this book they are coming out there is a second book and it's starring the crew for the anomaly files so that's so fucking exciting it comes out right after my birthday in july actually so maybe you'll read this in time to pick up the second one this summer too and then you can read about this summer and it will just be such a great summer for you i have one more book on this list and this is a chunker and this might be good like if you have a lot of time off this summer if you take a little vacation if you go up to the cabin or to the lake or to the ocean wherever you go in the summer oh my god and that is it by stephen king this is a behemoth book. In case any of you have never seen a physical copy of it, I don't know who hasn't by now, but I think this is the perfect book for summer reading because it takes place in the summer and also because it's kind of like a, what do they call it? A coming of age story, that's what it is. And I think as a kid, summer is like one of the times of the year, at least with how most of the school systems are in America, where you have, you know, your three month summer break, that so much happens, so many influential things happen. And I think that we all remember like our summers as children and how magical that th they seem looking back on it, even as an adult sometimes, you know, it's just like this n nostalgic, time in everyone's lives it seems like so it captures that perfectly because it follows this group of friends and a big part of this takes place in the summer after i don't know what grade they're in late elementary school so man it's such a great book and it's perfect for the summer because it's giant and you can just sink your teeth into it it's a great book that is all that i have for you though I couldn't narrow this recommendation list down for you. I'm sorry, this video is a little bit longer than I planned because I just kept gushing about these books, but they are so good. Every single one that I pick, I loved. So hopefully you will love them too if you decide to pick any of them up. So go ahead, let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know 
if there's anything that you plan on reading that really captures the feeling of summer, I would love to hear your recommendations if you have any. Um, yeah, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great summer. I will see you <laughs> before summer's over, I promise. I'm not gonna stop filming just because it's summer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I will see you in another video soon. Goodbye.